In this lesson, we will continue looking at the various tools, specifically the Comments tool, the Console tool, and the Define Data and Strings tools. So now let's look at the Comments tool. So go to Windows, Comments, and this pulls up a list of all the comments that you have and this is very useful again when analyzing something to leave notes for yourself. Now just real quick let's try to go over here to functions and just type in main because we want to actually get to some code. Click on main, double click there and scroll down and let's see how we can put comments in here. So to put a comment in you hit you can either right click and choose comments or you can hit the semicolon and you'll see there's four I'm sorry five different comments EOL end of line comment pre comment post comment plate comment and repeatable comment so an end of line comment and this is it's important to understand that the comments are intended for this listings this disassembly window they'll also pop up sometimes in the decompiling window but it's not if you for example go to a line of code here and try to put end of line it, it may not show up at the end of line because it's focused on the disassembly window so it's very when you put end of line it's literally at the end of this line for example but it's not decompiled code and does not go one-to-one -one disassembly so it's often hard to get them to show up where you want or show up at all so anyway let's work on this we'll have end of line comment first just put this is an end of line comment click OK and you can see here it pops up this is an end of line comment right after the line we can put one above it pre comment this is a pre comment and it goes above the line uh, semicolon we can put a post comment that's going to be obviously below the line this is a post comment and it goes uh, below the line if we put a plate comment this is like a pre comment except it, it is more like a, a big heading because it puts all kinds of it surrounds the comment with stars so this is a plate comment you can see here it goes above but it's surrounded by stars so that's it's more it attracts your attention when you're looking through this assembly and a repeatable comment is is very interesting basically they are within references you see how here for example, call scanf. You see this in in gray. This is a repeatable comment. Anywhere when you put a comment on something, anywhere that something is referenced, it will show up. So if I put that here, if I double click on this, I can actually put a repeatable comment in here. I can do semicolon, and I'll put this is a repeatable comment. And you see it appears here, but more importantly, I'll hit the back button. You see it shows up here because this actually is a reference to the code that I clicked on. Now, anywhere in the disassembly where you see something like this, call ISO 99 scanf or wh whatever your re things are referencing, this is going to show up everywhere. So you can see here again shows up oops shows up here and also shows up here so this is a way of putting a comment in a lot of places and this is usually used for functions so that's the comments window the next window we're going to talk about is the console window and this is going to be a short window to talk about because there's really not much to it. There is some scripting capability in Ghidra and the console just simply shows you the output of scripts. So we're not going to even be using that in this 
lesson or for quite a while. So that's the console. Now the next windows, which are data type manager and data type preview, are a little too complicated to even talk about during this introduction to Ghidra. The data type manager is an extremely powerful tool that you will use if you do analysis. However, it makes more sense to show that once we are in the process of analyzing things and a little more in depth. It just at this point it's too complicated for an intro but as we use the tools we'll deal with the data type manager and the data type preview. The decompiler window same thing this is one of the main tools that you will use and we will talk about this in great depth later. So the next windows to talk about are the defined data and the defined strings and I'm going to talk about them together because I don't actually understand why there's two of them. The defined data and defined strings, the defined strings is basically a subset of everything the defined data has in it, so I'm not sure why really defined strings is separate, except for maybe it's just a shortcut because often you want to look at strings. So define data, click on it, and it just tells you data that Ghidra has uh, determined is some type of data. And you can see there's all type of terminated C strings here, and often you commonly look for strings, so that maybe that's why there's a separate defined strings, because it only shows strings, and often you will look for strings. That's one of the most commonly searched through pieces of data. But I don't really know why they have a separate tool for strings and data. Because other data might be just an integer, for example. Here's 2h, uh, which is 2 in hexadecimal, which Yeter has determined is a value that is a defined value. And it, you can see here it shows you it's a D word, a double word, that means it's four bytes. You can see some data here, zeros, it's a word, two bytes. See that up here. Oops. If you click over here on this little gear, you can also narrow things down. Let's say you only want to th find things that Ghidra has determined is used as a character. I don't know. And I don't know that it's even going to show up here because I don't know if there's any character, single characters defined as data that the Ghidra could have analyzed and realized that because this, this, this is a trivial program that I've made. But let's go ahead and unclick everything. Actually, select none and then click car. And you can see, well, yep, nothing shows up. So let's do that again. Let's select none and let's just do, I don't know, car pointer. and it hasn't found any there. Let's try string. Terminate tree string or string. And we see all of these these uh, values that in the program is, is the sum of value 3 and value 4. Value 1 and value 3 is less than or equal to 10. That is a string. That is something that you would write that you're going to see as text in, in the program and we, it has determined it's a string. We can click on to it and you can see where it actually is in the program here at this address. There's also a filter window here. So let's say you were looking for something and you only wanted to th see things that started with, uh, that had two underscores in them. Well, you can put two underscores in there. Or let's say you only wanted to find things that had, I don't know, the word printf in them. You can put printf in there. So this define data window allows you to search through data that Yeter has found that it, it has determined is used as data, not as an instruction, that is data to an instruction. And it's really useful. And the, one of the most common things you would search for are it's going to be actually just strings or terminated C strings. Because again, w once we start doing an analysis, you'll see why strings are so useful. Does your organization need instructor-led training in advanced technical topics? Paladin Group can provide that. Check out our webpage.